We have an RRGG 10E37 JKR that we are going to be changing out here in a couple days. I'm coming by here to make my material list. Check underneath the hood and see what kind of duct connections we have. Uh, basically, the story on this machine is that it's just rusted out. As you can see, it doesn't get much better on the inside. Once I saw this, I checked the heat exchanger and it was cracked. So, maybe we'll get a picture of that once we start taking everything apart. But that's the story there. I'm going to get my material list and look under the hood. And then in a couple days, we're going to be replacing this bad boy. Alright, this is the crack in the heat exchanger. I don't know if we're going to be able to see this crap. Right underneath the Lamet control, you can sort of see it. Our old ream unit is gone now, off to the scrapyard. Our electrical sticking up there, disconnect is pulled out, ready for the new unit to arrive on the truck, 9 a.m. tomorrow. I blanked off all the openings in the crawl space so nothing's able to crawl in there. And we'll be setting the new Amana APG 13 seer 90,000 BTU gas pack right here. I'm taking the old thermostat off the wall here, and I thought Dallas might like this one. It's a little ream thermostat. It's a beautiful thermostat, and looks pretty good for all these years. It's coming up on 30 years old. Well, thought he would like that one. We're going to put up a Focus Pro, which he'll also like. Okay, the Focus Pro 3000 is on the wall. This is one heat, one cool. Uh, this is pretty much... Uh, this is about the cheapest thing Honeywell sells as far as thermostats, 3000 series. I know there's some other ones besides this one, but to me, they're all pretty good. Even the cheap ones are really good. Uh, it all depends on how much money you want to spend on the thermostat. You know, this one has a slide rule or a slide on the bottom of it. The other ones have touch screens or uh, different kinds of buttons, but these are these are nice. I like them, and they're uh, good thermostats. And I don't think, I don't remember ever replacing a 3000. I mean, I've replaced like two 5000s that are like hundreds uh, and I don't remember ever replacing a 3000 at all I don't use it as much but uh, it's a very good thermostat and if you want to get a thermostat that's economically priced I'd be going for this one all right we got our gas pack set over here we're tying it down got our return supply fittings tied in the electrical's already done the electrician's gone right now we're working on Tying in the gas. And then we'll be building the hood and starting things up. And actually, as soon as we tie in the gas, we'll probably start it up. And uh, everything's coming along good. We're putting our hood together now. See, there's a side on the other side. The side here is on. The uh, angle brackets are on the wall and on the unit. And at the end, I'll put the top on it. But for right now, this is how we can check temperature rise and stuff like that. We can put a probe on each side. I'm getting ready to light it up. Are you going to do so? Oh, is it not on? Gas valve on. Now. Check the gas pressure. We dialed it in at 11, 11 inches of water column. There's propane. Uh, I got the SOX3 running on it right now. Just do a little bit of quick check. Got our oxygen around 10% here, which is fine. It's a little bit high, just a tad high, but I'm not going to adjust it for that. Uh, had a temperature rise of 45 to 75 degrees. We came in right around 50, 52 degrees, so we're good to go there. Uh, we're just going to measure with the uh, field piece here. Just to make sure we don't have any problems. Let me move the dial here. Our CO2 is at 6.9%. And we're running at about 81% efficiency. And of course, 
all gas packs that I know of are 80%. Uh, and this is no different. It's 13C or 80% uh, gas pack. So we've got the old uh, gas line painted, prevent rust and everything. We're just running a few tests here, about to do put the testo on it. I got a Copeland Scroll compressor, uh, a micro channel. It is tiny. That is some tiny stuff right there, but there's our dryer. And uh, a good question would be how much refrigerant does this thing hold? Let me check. Let me see here. La, 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 la. 70 ounces of R410A. 70 ounces? That ain't a whole lot. And this is a three ton machine. So that's a good thing about micro channel, I guess. There's our fan up there. It has a swept fan blade. So we're going to start up the AC here in a second. Everything's looking good so far. Exactly as we played. All right, we got the unit running in AC. It's not really AC weather. <laughs> but I just wanted to run it for a few minutes to make sure everything looks relatively okay. Even though it's not really great charging weather. Uh, 25 degrees superheat, 11 degrees subcooling, or 228 over 105. Uh, even though I can't really technically check, check the charge, that's pretty much what I would expect to see on a day like today. Everything turned out good. Very quiet. And AC. Hood's all done. See the light emanating from the hood. Uh, the top's not screwed down, so the inspector can check it out. Uh, those are electrical, drain, gas piping. So we're good to go. Another successful day here at Town & Country Air. Thanks for watching.